In this video, I'll be sharing 15 practical tips that you can apply to your day-to-day -day life and make your studies more enjoyable, more fruitful and more fun. So that whatever time you are spending on your table and chair, you are actually loving it and not dreading it. I've used almost all of the tips that I've talked about in this video in my own personal life and they have bought me wonders for the last 7 years studying as a NEET aspirant and then as a medical student. If you don't know me, hi, I'm Dr. Anish Pachel and I am an MBBS intern working at GMC Nagpur. And to be very honest, during preparation of NEET PG also, I use some of these tips which I talk about. First thing is first, don't be overwhelmed by the syllabus. We have all known the feeling when the notes that we have ordered online and we open the huge box of notes and we are overwhelmed because okay, do we really have to study this much for this one particular examination literally it's a box of one into one meter and that is something that actually can give many people anxiety including myself whenever i'm preparing for this examination let's say need pg i try to eliminate as much as possible from my field of view that means i limit the syllabus which i have to do on one particular week for example in one week let's say i'm going to be studying obstetrics and gynecology pediatrics and let's say medicine part one so in that particular week i'll only keep the three books in front of my desk and nothing else. I will not even take a look at my library because that itself is going to throw me back and make me say, Are yaar, kitna zada padna ye kaise hoga? But instead, when my brain focuses on just these three books which are kept, okay, then the things are much more easier, much more approachable and actually much more fun. One thing I used during my NEED PG preparation was, you can see this particular shelf over here. Uh, so this shelf used to be completely full, just like it is right now. But when I'm not recording videos in this particular room, this shelf is actually completely empty and it just contains five or ten books which are my actual celebrity us for need pg breaking an exam down into just five notebooks is going to release so much pressure from your mind and it's going to make you study efficiently as well as you're going to enjoy the process so do not be overwhelmed by the syllabus instead reduce it from your field of view and focus on one thing at a time and everything will seem to be easy if you are somebody who watches video lectures quite a lot so let's say there is a subject and it's got like 150 lectures of it and you have to complete those 150 lectures in order to complete the subject even if you study hard you can complete like five to six lectures a day that is going to take mental toll because patch lectures you're gonna see no progress has been added to your progress bar so in that case what you should do is that you should you can download the videos so that they appear in a separate download section and then you can complete okay today's five downloads we have to complete five downloads only so focus on these five things and get them done by the end of the day do not worry on what is your overall progress as long as you're taking small steps every day you're going to be reaching there when you look at the grand scheme of things and you realize how small your step actually is it can demotivate you from studying point number two eliminate the choice oftentimes we have multiple things to study and we cannot decide what do we actually want to do so make a schedule of short term that means of let's say three four days or one week and just blindly follow that schedule without having to put your mind to okay today i have to study this today i have to study that otherwise confusion ke chakkar mein padhai bhi nahi hogi aur tumhara din bhi waste ho jayega making a schedule which will send a notification to your phone in the morning i've already talked about how to do that in this particular video it will reduce the friction of getting started and will actually put you in a good position of consistency if you make your schedule too narrow that is of just one or two days you'll just quickly finish it then you'll feel unemployed but if you make a schedule way too long you might not be able to stick to it so the ideal length for your scheduling should be like 5 to 7 days which is appropriate for most people including myself all right number 3 try new ways of learning the same same thing just like eating the same food every day can get boring reading and memorizing in the same way can get boring for your mind as well so use some of the study techniques which i've already talked about in many videos to enhance your learning and try out new styles for your workflow for example you can use active learning instead of passive learning rather than just flipping through pages of the book use an a4 size paper and keep it over the notebook and ask yourself the questions from the topic that you've just read so instead of just reading the theory okay this is etiology pathogenesis etc you can ask yourself what is the etiology tell me and then you can just remove the paper to reveal the answer that way you are having active recall done sometimes i go to my whiteboard and teach myself the topic which i've just learned which is another way i spice up the learning process sometimes i make mnemonics as well as sometimes i end up taking classes for my juniors because because i want to get better at the subject myself thinking about new ways to learn a lot of times you encounter questions which are very difficult and we always go through the traditional method of understanding it by the books but sometimes that's not enough because we don't have a teacher with us what you can do instead is you can click the photograph of that picture and upload it to this application called as philo philo within 60 seconds will connect you to an expert on that particular topic let's say from physics chemistry or biology whatever thing that you've asked you can then interact with that expert via video call or voice call and get all your questions completely cleared you can ask them pyqs normal questions or any difficulties that you might be facing during revisions if you don't like the teacher you can reconnect to somebody else or if you do end up liking them you can save them to your favorites and continue asking all your questions to them going forwards philo has also got 11th and 12th ncrt some pyqs and a lot more i've added a link in the description to go check out philo for yourself it is a wonderful application you can use my code ap philo 10 to get 10 percent off thank you philo for supporting the channel now back to the video point number four research the real life users of what you are actually studying this is very very beneficial to the medical students especially on the internet you are able to find out so many case reports and the real cases which have happened of the diseases that you find interesting 
For example, you're reading diabetic ketoacidosis in medicine and you don't know that it could actually present with an acute abdomen. So you can read about the case report of DKA presenting with acute abdomen and seeing how they approached and evaluated that particular patient. So suddenly a topic which might be as boring as DKA will become very fascinating when you connect it to the real life cases. One of the best things that you can do is subscribe to the channel. Every time I release a case files episode, which is basically a medical equivalent of completing a disease from one good textbook, you'll always be notified. Not just in medicine, but also in maths and physics, you can apply this knowledge and research for how real life equations help build up current science and technology. I used to do this quite a lot in third year MBBS when I did not used to understand this subject called as ophthalmology, I still don't. I really hope there will be one day when I actually understand ophthalmology, but that day is very very far. So I used to go to YouTube and actually watch the videos of the surgeries which they are performing that actually oriented me a little bit better to the subject than I was currently before. So researching on a topic which I am reading which was boring to me and connecting it to a thing which is in real life, for example surgeries, made me tie this lot between the theory as well as the real life use of it, making my studies interesting as well as fun. By the way, if you are enjoying this video, consider subscribing to our channel. It would really, really mean a lot to me. Making videos such as this one takes up a lot of time, effort and energy and subscribing in just two seconds would make up for all of that. Number five, have a clean and a designated place of study. If your table is inviting, if your chair is rigid, then you will sit down and start studying right away. The, and the entire setup of your room will attract you towards studying. We've already covered how to set up an effective study space. You can watch that video linked in the description after this video is done. The basic idea is whatever your study space is, it should be neat and clean. It should be able to tell you what your actual goal is that you're working towards. It should have plenty of natural light and if not, it should have a diffused overall artificial light. And lastly, if possible, add some greenery around it so that it emits positive waves. Moving on to number six, turn your studies into a game. This is going to be a game changer for you, especially with respect to the difficult subjects. I did not really like physics because my physics teacher was, let's say, not good as a compliment to him. So I set up a timer of just 30 minutes and I used to tell myself, okay, we just have to study physics for this 30 minutes. And if you are able to study 30 minutes for three times, you don't have to study physics for the rest of the day. So I tricked my brain into studying physics for one and a half hours. So by turning my studies into a game, I tricked my mind into studying more and studying more effectively. So my brain always thought, okay, we just have to study for 30 minutes. It's no big deal. I can do it. You can do it. Anybody can do it except my physics sir who taught me physics apparently. So the end result was I ended up getting good at physics. I also liked physics at the end and I scored decently in it. Number seven, have an outlet. Life is more than studies and sometimes it's difficult. Consistency, consistency and consistency, but sometimes it turns into burnout, burnout and burnout. It happens with every single student. In fact, med students are the biggest shikar of this particular disease. Having outlets like going out for a walk, talking to your friend, or going out on dates with your girlfriend, imaginary or real, that you have to decide by yourself. Or just chatting with your parents can really help burn the stress. I used to do this a lot during MBBS and you can still find traces of it in the study with me video on my rooftop sometimes in between of my study sessions because it was getting so hectic for my mind to handle things. And I used to go on the rooftop, enjoy the greenery, enjoy the plants, enjoy the sunlight which is coming up, enjoy the sunset or the sunrise, whichever it was. And that used to have a dramatic effect on my motivation to study for that particular day. So try it out, you might enjoy it. Number eight, start your day with coffee. So some people like it, some people don't like it. So chai, coffee, beverage of choice. So I just like coffee, so I'm gonna say coffee in this particular video. Put up the milk on the stove, start eating it, add the coffee to your mug, add the sugar to your mug, and brew yourself a delicious cup of coffee. Take that coffee up to your room, sit down with some nice relaxing music, Open up your textbook and start studying while sipping that wonderful delicious coffee you just brewed. That sounds like such a fun idea, I'm probably gonna do it right now, after I'm done shooting this video. We added an activity which you actually love to an activity which you don't like together. Making coffee as well as studying. You love making coffee, you love coffee in general and you hate studying. So you first make the coffee and gradually let that coffee take you to your studies. And then once you are sitting, there is nobody to stop you. I used to do this quite a lot when I used to wake up at 4 a.m. So by 4.20, I was in my room with my coffee with some gentle music playing, Kuch Interstellar Ka Ya Inception Ka. And I used to sit down and study for long hours till 10 or 11 in the morning. And then I used to have my breakfast. Good old days. I hope that those days come back soon after this dreadful internship has ended. <laughs> Moving on to tip number nine. Read it till you understand and then visualize it. For everything that you're reading, go to the depths and understand the concepts that you're actually after. Most of the subjects that you feel are boring are because the books that you're using are actually hopeless or the teachers that you're teaching to you are not good at teaching. For example, physics. I ended up liking the subject, but my teacher was not good. So that's why I started with hating the subject. If I had not taken the initiative myself, probably I would have been bad in physics for the rest of my life. Instead of blaming the subject, ki, ye subject bahut bakwas hai, mujhe acha nahi lagta. actually try to sit down and understand and go to the depths of that particular subject. You will understand sometimes even the worst of subjects can turn out to be the most beautiful ones. Find a concept or a topic that you are actually weak at and go to YouTube or go to some decent websites. 
provide you with explanations. If you are facing difficulties in anatomy, you can go to the 3D anatomy sites which will provide you models of anatomy which you can then rotate around and visualize as to what the textbook actually means to say when it says that this particular muscle is inserted into the posterior medial groove of the lateral aspect of this particular bone. I've made a lot of videos explaining things to students and I've linked a playlist down below. It is currently unlisted so you'll, that playlist will be only available via link. So for all the med students, it's a free resource. You can go check it out. Make sure to subscribe to the second channel by the way. Point number 10 visualize your goals so how does visualization of your goals actually make you study how does it motivate you to study and how does it make your studies fun so for a long time when we are studying for let's say a competitive examination we are so focused on the examination that we forget that what is the reason that we're actually studying that's good for 90 percent of the times but sometimes you have to think beyond that sometimes you have to actually visualize what are you actually studying for for example for neat pg let's say that i want to target surgery probably thinking that target is 10 to 15 years later i might be a good surgeon to visualize that, I put up wallpapers for surgeries, I put up Instagram stories for surgeries. And also from day to day, visualize what surgery will feel like when I'm, I grow older, when I get better, when I become a senior doctor. For a need aspirant, you can actually subscribe to me and the videos which I make. Probably give you a very decent idea of what it's like to be a med student and how actually fun it is to become a member of this course of MBBS. But whatever it is, stay in touch with it because it will actually motivate you to your targets. Number 11 is to actually use good stationery. So I did not believe in the concept of using different colored pens or having sticky notes or whatever up until last year. But my God, my concepts totally changed when I started using them. I started using the good ones. You know, good highlighters, good sticky notes and well-written small, small notes actually invite you to study. And it's exactly opposite when you write something like you don't want to read it yourself, you don't want to understand what you And make the notes which you are making at at least readable and if possible pretty so that once you actually open it you feel invited to study rather than repulsive to close it and just call it a day point number 12 stay away from quick dopamine dopamine really does make us happy i mean it is the reason that you're smiling watching this video or maybe it is the number of jokes that i crack maybe you've just noticed that the light outside is now dim but anyways dopamine is the hormone which actually keeps us happy and when you are too happy you don't actually want to do the difficult stuff because difficult stuff does indeed release dopamine but you have to climb a mountain instead of just taking a scroll to have the same amount of dopamine release. Even scrolling social media for a few minutes will kill your motivation to do anything that you want to do. For example, let's say that you want to study. Instead, you take up your phone, you start scrolling social media. 10 to 15 minutes later, you will just keep your phone away and you will be so unmotivated to study. You will feel like I'm just going to go to sleep right now. Let me cancel my study session. I'll study someday else. But I'm just very happy right now. I'm just too comfortable. Why study when I can get the same amount of happiness just by scrolling? This does not mean that you eliminate all the happy things in your life. I'm against quick activation of the dopaminergic receptors, not I'm against the chronic activation of dopamine receptors receptors, not the subacute or the acute activation. So find a hobby, for example, start playing the guitar, start learning a new instrument, or just go for a walk. Things like this will still give you dopamine without killing your motivation. Things like music, reading, cooking, etc. are good starting points. Point number 13. Talk to the experts on the field and learn from them. Just like I said that the subjects can be ruined by bad teachers. Talking to the experts on that particular subject will actually make you fall in love with the subject once again. I pretty much love medicine because of Rakesh sir's teachings and I love Dermat and radiology because of Zainab man. It all comes down to the good resources that you're using, the good teachers that you're actually getting your learnings from and actually the experts on the field that will always teach you. Point number 14 is to break the tasks into manageable chunks. Instead of writing that you have to do pharmacology today, you just have to write, I have to do ANS from pharmacology as well as cardiology from pharmacology. That just reduces the mental burden of you sitting down and opening this big huge KDT textbook and not realizing what you have to do. So the fear of approaching a subject decreases because you have written down specifically what you need to achieve for that particular day. This is very very essential when you are facing exam times because time is already running low and losing motivation is a common thing in between the papers. Break your big subjects into smaller smaller digestible pieces all throughout the day which you can have. You can actually do this while making a schedule just like I said in point number two or even before starting the subject. Point number 15 is very important that is to celebrate your achievements. If your GT score went up, congratulations, go party. If your marks improved, congratulations, go party. If you clicked on the subscribe button, I'll give you a party. So whatever small achievements that you're getting actually celebrate it. It will give you a newfound motivation to start studying. Anyways, that was all from me today, guys. If this video even gave you one practical tip that you can use in a day-to-day -day life, please make sure to like the video and share it to your friends and family. This is Dr. Rich Pashil and for more such quality content without bakwas, you can again subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.